going to go inside the Aquascape Ecosystem Recreation Pond here. is simple. Education in action, conservation in action. This is Camp Kennedy. Hey, what's going on everybody? Kennan here and I'm really excited for today's video because I am going to go inside the Aquascape Ecosystem Recreation Pond here in the backyard and we're going to show you some of the cichlids that I've been stocking this pond with and it should be a really fun episode because these fish are just doing amazing. Look at this. You can see them just behaving as they should. Some Du Boise right there. We've got all kinds of fish in here. We got the electric blues. We got some haps. We got the empress. I'm really excited to show you guys everything. But first, I kind of want to walk you guys around the pond and show you just how much this thing has been evolving and growing as an ecosystem. Now, some of you guys remembered that a few weeks back when we did the anaconda video, there was a lot of algae. And a lot of you guys were kind of worried about the pond. But guys, this is all part of these aquascape ecosystems. You really have to allow the pond to cycle. Uh, I didn't have any plants in there. Uh, as you can see right now, we've got ourselves some beautiful lilies. Uh, went to Florida Aquatic Nurseries. You can check that out on the Army Channel, on the Camp Cannon Army Channel, where I actually go and purchase all kinds of different plants. We get the kind of 411. Look at this inside this little bog area. It's not only a little nursery for baby fish, but it's actually going to be a place where this Mexican papyrus grows. Really excited because this plant is going to get massive. It'll get huge, it'll fill this whole area up, and it'll get close to seven foot tall. And uh, again, the reason we do all of these plants is because we want to create uh, a situation where the ecosystem is balanced. You've got to have the plants to soak up the nutrients in the pond. And once that happens, you're really able to continue to keep this water clear. Look at this. You can see straight to the bottom of this pond. That is just incredible. The snorkeling in here is amazing, as you guys are about to see. Oh, we got little baby toads right there. Uh, we got everything just kind of happening here. Life abounds. We also have some baby cichlids that you guys are going to be able to see as well. Now, you guys know that down in here is where the leopard tortoises live. They've been using this area. I love watching them drink. Uh, there's the pond. I put uh, these branches in here to look like a log jam so that the tortoises can't climb up. Turns out the leopard tortoises are pretty darn good at climbing up the waterfall and walking out. So we don't want that to happen. But we've got all kinds of beautiful plants. Uh, we've got this canna Cleopatra. I went to Excelsa Gardens uh, in South Florida. Really, really cool exotic nursery. We've got uh, different bromeliad, imperial bromeliads. We've got uh, Monstera Delicato. I don't know. It's some kind of really cool um, Philodendron Monstera Deliciosa, something like that. I don't know. Why don't you guys look it up and let me know? We've got, uh, oh, here's something you guys should check out. So these are fishtail palms, okay? They provide a really cool clumping uh, palm look. They get about 30 foot tall down here in South Florida, and that'll provide shade uh, because we're facing the north right now, and so that sun is going to be pelting this all day. So I want to create shade for everything to kind of further keep this pond shaded. But the cool thing about these plants were they were throwing them away. These were plants that were too beat up to sell. So I wound up grabbing a few of them. I put them in the ground and bam, they're just coming right back to life. We got the elephant ears. We got the blue Hawaii elephant ear. I moved the, um, I moved the log. The log originally sat right here but I didn't like how it was kind of restricting the flow. I want to make sure that all the debris that's floating floats right up and over that zero edge. Uh, again, we've got some more lilies here. That's uh, Chloe's Sunshine right there. So there's different names for these lilies. I don't know the scientific name, but these are tropical lilies and uh, they're going to provide shade uh, in the pool as well, pond rather. They're going to spread out. We're going to get some more lilies in this bottom section right there. Uh, and it's really just going to help us out. There's the sarlacc patch, my carnivorous plants. We've got beautiful and strange flowers. I forgot the uh, variety, sadly, guys. 
This is a really cool flower, attracts butterflies. Um, really, really amazing. It's a vine that's gonna grow up all the way up on top of this uh, coconut palm, but I'm really loving these because they're so strange looking. Uh, and then in the bog filter, you'll notice I do have some algae. And that's okay, this string algae I want in here because this is a giant filter as well. Um, the bog has got plants, uh, the Victoria, um, the Amazonian plants, I kind of screwed up. <laughs> um, they are dying off, but there's a new pad, so I'm happy about that. Um, but, you know, I make mistakes with the plants. I actually I accidentally sprinkled a little algae side on it. And um, then I was told by Ed, do not do that, because this string algae is actually good because it is a giant filter. Um, and I don't mind it. You know, I was just kind of wondering if it was supposed to be here. And now that I found out it is, it doesn't bother me because I want to continue to keep this pond nice and clean. All right, here's the nursery. We're going to go underwater. It's time for us to get in the pond. I love swimming in the early morning. That's when I find the pond is at its most placid. So we're going to get in there. We're going to start swimming around. And I think you guys are going to enjoy this. All right, everybody. I just want to get my mask, get my mask cleaned off. Oh, and then we're going under. Ooh, little fog. All right, you're gonna love this. I do this every single morning. It's early here in the morning. It's the best time to go in the pond. The fact that I'm greeted by this myriad of different cichlids here in my own backyard just blows me away. So the goal with this was to try and recreate just a little bit of the African Rift Lakes. Now these lakes were formed from volcanic activity in the Rift Valley in Eastern Africa. And basically these fish have evolved from saltwater fish. They share a lot of similarities. And one of the things that I noticed is just how much these guys love to use the rocks as cover. In the Rift Lakes like Lake Tanganyika and Lake Malawi, it's a very, very rocky habitat. And you can see just all the way down to about five and a half foot how much rock we really have. The other really cool thing that works with these fish in Florida is the fact that our water has a very high pH. It's very alkaline, just like the Rift Lakes. Now, those two lakes are also extremely deep and they actually, uh, the fish are only really found up to about 50 meters because it's very stratified. There's not a lot of oxygen down at the bottom of those lakes. So most of the fish have evolved to live closer to the sunlit surface. Now, the other cool thing about African cichlids is they are the most diverse species out there. The cichlids are the ones that have the most explosive uh, evolutionary history. There's only a few relatively non-cichlid fish inside the lakes and they don't share the same amount of diversity as the African cichlids. But inside my backyard aquascape ecosystem pond, you can really see just how many of them are floating around. And how about as we cruise up a little closer to this rock, we can check out some of the babies like this little tiny Du Boise. Now these guys are from Lake Tanganyika, but I have them in this pond because what I'm trying to do is create a representation of most of the fish in Africa. I don't have separate ponds for them. It's a kind of a community situation in this pond. Now some people would think, oh, these Du Boise, they're just too aggressive. But the fact that I have so many uh, places for the other fish to hide, I'm really not worried about it. The other reason I love those Du Boise, <laughs> the little guy just disappeared here for me. Hey, where'd you go? just hanging out there. They, they're very wary when they're small. And there you are. So they're using all these different pathways. The cool thing about the Du Boise guys that you've heard me talk about ad nauseum is the fact that they're really good at eating algae off of the rocks. And since I've put them in here, they've been having a feast. And the other cool thing about the pond are the lily pads I put in from Florida Aquatic Nurseries. These are going to continue to grow and I'm gonna add more and I'm gonna create something of an underwater forest. So there'll be even more habitat for the fish to hide in and for their young to reproduce and to have kind of like a nursery. Here's some adult Du Boise. These guys are fun. They're just, I don't know what it is about them. I just love their behavior. I love the fact that they're a workhorse of the pond. And I like the way that they interact with the rocks. Oh, but then again, there's also the empress, the red empress. They're very curious fish. 
Actually, all of these cichlids are pretty curious. You see how they school around me? There's some adult mangamo. These are Marabuma, the Mbuma. I have a hard time with some of these names, guys. It's, it's so cool to be learning all over again. I love it. So Mbuna, can somebody help me with that pronunciation? We're all trying to learn here together. And I love bringing you guys in on all of my experiences here at the camp. I just started getting into these fish about a year ago when I got my first Aquascape ecosystem pond. I love koi, but to me, just the way these rocks are and the way we build these ponds and the alkalinity of the water, it's so much more exciting for me to do African cichlids. I love the intensity of the colors and I love the way they interact with this environment. And here's some smaller ones. Look at this, we have babies starting out. There's a baby electric blue right there and that's exactly what my buddy Paul from Angels Hatchery said would happen. We got the electric blue a couple months ago. They're already starting to spawn. They're already little babies and they're getting bigger and bigger. Soon, there'll be hundreds in this pond and boy, will it be a light show. Here's another small cichlid and of course, the Boise. Now this area of the pond, I'm pretty excited because we're gonna be adding some grasses to that area and it's gonna create a seabed, a seabed of grass. And all these little babies, like this baby, uh, that's a mangamo right there, that little baby mangamo. And then the, I don't know what species these are, but they're beautiful. Hey, if you guys know the names of these species, let me know. And by the way, how about this? All the guppies, I'm glad they're guppies because if they weren't, they would be piranha. These guys are always nibbling at my skin. It's almost like the Camp Kennan Spa. If you got dead skin, just go swimming and these fish are gonna nibble them off. Inside this elephant ear root, you can see the tiny little cichlid there. And the other cool thing about the roots, notice how they're absorbing all of the nutrients and debris and detritus from the water. Let's get out into some more open water here. Again, the Red Empress, super, super impressive fish. Uh, one of my favorites here in the pond, and I just love watching them follow me around. I also like to see how long I can hold my breath. Here I go. It's so relaxing to be in here and to have this just basically, it's, it's something of an underwater laboratory for me. I get to learn about these animals. I get to just be at peace in my backyard and everything underwater is just tranquil. Look at these fish. Now we've all grown up with aquariums, but tell me, is this not the ultimate aquarium? You guys gotta get a pond. I've really been so excited learning about them all. Here's another baby Mengamo. And then a Du Boise trying to hide from me underneath the log. This log is so cool. It provides, it's real hollow in the center, so it provides a really nice hiding spot. And what's also cool is I'm starting to learn all the nooks and crannies of the pond and finding that certain fish are living there. Chloe Sunshine, that's the name of that lily. It's so, so amazing to be able to do this every single morning to come in see just how life is unfolding underneath the surface here of this pond. Uh, I'm going to take you guys now through the tunnel and we're going to go into what I'd like to call the fish nursery because there's a lot of baby fish in there, a lot of baby cichlids and I want to show them to you guys so let's go check it out. I love the way the lighting creates a mirror-like effect in the pond and here's the tunnel. Now notice we just took a culvert and cut it in half, hit it and now it is a perfectly functioning tunnel that the fish can swim through and get out of the sun if they want to. Here is the nursery. And there are three baby Du Boise. I love the life cycles of this fish. They are beautiful as babies and then they come turn into very interesting adults in their behavior. But look at how they just stay together and hide in the rocks. I love coming into the nursery because I like checking up on all the fish here. Everybody is just doing awesome. The other cool thing is they hang out in the stream because that waterfall oxygenates the water. So they're getting some really great oxygenated water. It's got some movement and we're also going to put some seagrass in there as well. And here's a teenager Du Boise who does not want to be seen. So see you later. 
and those power heads, when I turn them on, create a great flow of water right through the tunnel and out into the main body of the pond. That's where we're headed next. See you little guys. What's really cool is my snorkel can fit through the top and I can breathe all the way through the tunnel. And then this is what it looks like when I come on out into the main body of the pond where I'm greeted by adult Du Boise, the Red Empress, the two fish that Paul Cafaro put in, which I don't know the species name. You see them right there? That one with the orange fins? I wonder if you guys could help me out with that. But there's a Red Empress and I love the way they look. A gang of Du Boise on the right, and then it's time to go right down into the depths of my pond. And one of my favorite fish in the pond, one of the first fish I got, was the electric blue. Let's chase him around and see how well I can do. This guy does not want to be bothered with the big loud human that's interrupting his peaceful morning. They are awesome fish, really, really beautiful. And you can see him trying to confuse me by switching directions. All right, dude, we'll let you go. Ah, well, folks, I got to tell you, it's so much fun learning about these fish. I hope you guys are really enjoying these underwater pictures. So let's just relax and enjoy the ultimate aquarium in my Aquascape Ecosystem Recreation Pond. And of course, I gotta ham out a little bit and try and get a decent thumbnail for this video. So that's what I was trying to do. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And thanks so much, guys. More to come from this amazing habitat we're building here. I hope you guys, I'll put on Booker's voice. <laughs> anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video. Uh, this pond is amazing. The Aquascape guys really outdone themselves here at Camp Cannon. And I'm so happy that I have this to share with you guys. And uh, more swimming widths coming up. Don't forget, this pond is gonna just keep evolving. I can't wait to check back with you guys. Keep following along if you wanna see how this thing continues to grow. And uh, like and subscribe if you enjoy these videos. I'm getting eaten alive by these fish. Oh my gosh, this one's eating me alive. <laughs> A little piranha. Uh, anyhow, like and subscribe. If you guys like these videos and want to help support them, go to patreon.com. <laughs> patreon.com slash camp. And I'm getting eaten alive. Just eat a bunch of little insects and stuff. <laughs> I don't know if you guys are old enough to remember the Magic Garden.